Welcome to Addiction Recovery Tip Today. Your hostess is Cindy Charles Olette. Cindy is the author of the book, Crying Hearts of the Loved Ones. She is over 11 years clean and sober, an addiction recovery coach and trainer of coaches, a motivational speaker, and motivational writer. My name is Cindy Charles Olette, and I am the author of Crying Hearts of the Loved Ones. And... Um, but by the grace of God, I haven't needed to pick up a drink or use mind-altering drugs since December 27, 2003. And today I would like to break my anonymity and talk to you about my adventure doing my fifth step. Because I had um, gotten clean and sober in a third world country and did not speak Spanish well enough. I had learned how to do my fifth step from Joe and Charlie. I had listened to a wonderful, wonderful, um, well, it's a podcast now, but at that time, it, I just went online, and I listened from Mexico all the way to Iceland, I think it is, xa-speakers.org, and it is a wonderful, wonderful website, and uh, you can listen to up to 3,000 leads and seminars and teachings and I found Joe and Charlie and I learned how to do my steps in a third world country and through Joe and Charlie and I had all my fourth step written and I was ready to do my my fifth step and I'd like to read that to you what it is step five admitted to God and to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs so I was ready to do that but I didn't know Spanish enough to do it in that language. I needed to do it in English because doing a fifth step, uh, explaining all the resentments that one has had and how one came about them, well, you need to know emotional words, and those words I did not know in another language except English. So it took me a long time because it's a, a program of recovery that's wonderful. And, but it is, uh, has anonymity. I choose to break my anonymity. That's what I want to do. Let me see if I can go up a little higher here. Excuse me. I choose to break my anonymity, but that doesn't mean that other people need to do that. Uh, professional reasons, social reasons, um, family reasons, um, uh, Perhaps uh, the people have their reasons that they have to maintain their anonymity. But I, I choose to break mine and tell you about my fifth step. So it had, I had a hard time finding people or someone to, to locate to give my fifth step to. And so what I had to do was Google. I probably day and night I was trying to find a newspaper ad with something to do with some type of a AA or recovery program and somebody's name. In Texas, because I, I could get to Texas, it was closer than other states for me. And I wanted to, I finally found one name, but that name was, um, it could have been, it, it was like a unisex name. It could be used for male or female. I didn't know and I didn't care. I, I found their phone number. I called them. They were on a coastal town in Texas. Uh, the third time I called, someone actually answered and I explained my situation that. I needed to get my steps done so that I could stay clean and sober and that I could fly there if they would be so kind to sit with me and listen to my fifth step. And um, so I spoke to a man and then he handed me to a lady and I told the same thing to the lady and then the lady asked the man and they said yes. So I didn't know who I was going to go see, a male or a female. It didn't matter at this point. I needed to get my steps done to stay clean and sober. And once anyone does, their fifth step life really is magnificent and it's just worth it um, I can't see any reason to delay doing the steps knowing that life is going to be so wonderful because after we're in the ninth step that's when our promises on page 84 do begin to come true anyway so I fly to Houston there wasn't an airport in that little coastal town and my very best girlfriend uh, had her brother-in-law pick me up, and she couldn't drive. She was very ill. 
and on a on a coastal town also in Texas, and I called that person, and I did talk to a woman, and and, and she said, how are how are you going to get here? And I said, uh, I'll walk, and she said, no, I, I don't think you will. It's pretty far. I said, it looks kind of close on the map. We walk a lot in Mexico, and she says, no, it's very very far. You're not going to be able to walk that far, but I'm going to have a gentleman pick you up. And don't be afraid. Um, don't be afraid. He can. He's to be highly trusted, and he'll pick you up. And then he and his girlfriend will pick you up again after you get finished. So he did. He picked me up the next day, and he was an old timer. I was so blessed to get to know this gentleman. He died about three years ago. Later on, he did marry his girlfriend, and they and my husband of seven years now. Uh, who's also in the program, 21 years, we, we really, really became great friends. But he picked me up and he dropped me off and I, I went into this house. And I've been out of the United States 21 years. So I was like, if there'd been a fly or a bee, it had gone in my mouth. I mean, it, it just I was like, ah, looking at this beautiful modern house. And so we sat down. She was unpacking. She had just bought the house. And... Uh, we went through my 96 resentments, and she was so kind and really a living example of someone who, who works and lives uh, the, the 12 steps of a recovery program. Kind, understanding, comforting, patient, silent when she needed to be silent, and encouraging when she needed to be encouraging. So we were intense about all this because I've had a pretty different life. And I, she was going through that and listening to all that. And finally, after five hours, I said, do you think that I could have a glass of water? And she said, oh, my gosh, I forgot. Would you like some green tea? And I'd never even heard of green tea. And I said, um, okay. And, when, and uh, we made a sandwich and sat down and. And continued, and it took eight hours. And then she took me to her living room, sat me down beside her fireplace, said, you need to take this big book and do steps six and seven, six now, and seven now. And she left, and I never saw her again for a long, 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 long time. And she said, the gentleman will be here for you shortly. And he came. She probably was exhausted eight hours. I, you know, and I had, she'd been so kind to let me interrupt her day. And he came, and uh, he was with his girlfriend, later his wife, and they took me to my first meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous in the United States. And, uh, again, I was like in awe, <laughs> like a child that was, I don't know, in the, her first candy shop. And... Uh, it was in a church that did not happen in Mexico. They had candy and tablecloth, and it was clean, and it had air conditioning, and it was just really amazing. They did the chip ceremony or ritual, and that was so exciting to me. I'd read about it and online on Grapevine, and um, I didn't share. I was too afraid to do that, uh, but I was in awe, and uh, when the meeting was over, the lady who became the husband of the man who'd given me the ride, she came over and gave, I was two and a half years sober, and she gave me every single chip. It, it was it was breathtaking for me. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience, and we went to eat. Well, let me tell you. So I go on back to Mexico, and two months Two months, yes, two months later, I escaped for my life, and I came back to America and met up with another friend in the northern part of the United States and started my life. Total culture shock. But it, wherever there's AA, you're okay. You know you're okay. <laughs> That's what you need to know and understand. And uh, so... I fall in love, I meet Mr. Wright, I move to West Virginia, I become an addiction recovery coach in the Appalachian Mountains, and uh, my, my husband 
uh, says, you know, before we, when we were dating, he says, every five years I go to a worldwide uh, AA convention. And we just did go to Atlanta. And uh, he said, I want you to go ahead and, and register us. It's going to be in San Antonio. And I said, I don't think they're going to let me off to go to that. For, uh, it's a long ways. We'll be gone a long time. At least a week and a half. And he said, you, you trust in the dying God. And this was a year prior. He said, you trust in the divine God. You go ahead and pay the $100 each, and we'll just trust in the divine God. And I said, okay. And do you know that my job I miraculously came to an end two days before it was time to pack and go to San Antonio? I didn't lose my job, just that my position had been terminated due to no more grants, and they gave me two months off while they found another job and I did not lose seniority or insurance. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, so I immediately called the friend uh, that had uh, picked me up and taken me to my fifth step and then taken me to a meeting, my first meeting. And I said, oh, I'm going to the convention. Are you going? They said, why sure? And I said, well, please call that lady that I did my fifth step with and please tell her I'd love to meet her at the convention, or if she can't go afterwards, I'll just drop back to the town and just give her a hug. And she said, oh, well, she went back out two years ago. And I said, what? Yeah, she was lost for a long time. Nobody knew where she was, and she went back out. But she's back in town now. And I said, well, if you see her, would you please say hi for me? So, we get packed, we're ready to leave, and about one state away from after we've left, well, I guess we're at the end of Kentucky, we get a text message and said, went to a meeting last night, sent her a message through other people that you were coming, and she sent me a message back that she'd pick up her chip, her 24-hour chip, she did this morning, and she'll be at the convention. That was the 2010 convention. To the best of my knowledge, um, a year and a half ago, she's still going strong. But for the grace of God, she hasn't had a reason to pick up her use. And my husband calls that a full circle. He calls it a full circle. I've heard him say it before, but now I have the real concept of it. And that was all about my adventure of my fifth step. I'm going to read that again to you. Admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. And it was so exciting when we got up the ramp to the big Alamo Center, I think they call it. And there she was in cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. And she says, howdy, and gave me a hug just like we. she had never left the program. Thanks for letting me share. And um, just for today, remember that we don't pick up our use no matter what. And if you'd like to invite other people to my Periscope, Cindy Tells Addiction Tales and Tips, you can go to uh, my website, uh, Crying Hearts of the Loved Ones, or Cindy uh, Charles Olette.com, or see me on Twitter at Cindy Olette, O U E L L E. T -T -E. And please invite other people. So it could be that people can't get to a meeting, but they can watch this. Thank you. Thank you for enjoying today's tip of the day. We invite you to tune in tomorrow for another sobriety tip. And please visit our website, cindycharlesolette.com, to send us your favorite recovery tips to broadcast. For now, remember, just for today, we don't pick up or use, no matter what.